Hi, I'm Stuart. Welcome to Sarnet Television. You've come to Studio One. We're going to be going over to Chris in a minute to take a look at a product from Wheelan Engineering. It is the MC11. It's a mini beacon. It's really cool and neat. And you get a chance to see all the tech specs and different information on the website. So go ahead and check those out. But in the interim, let's go across right now and have Chris take it apart. Thank you very much, Stuart. Wheelan Engineering's Mini Century LED light bar. This one here happens to be the MC11 PA. So part number breakdown for you is the MC stands for mini century. 11 is 11 inch profile for the width of it. P, permanent mount, A for amber. There's a wide variety of these bars available, different color configurations and different sizes as well. So you have a 16 inch and a bigger 23 inch. But for here, we're focusing on the 11. It's a great mini bar. It's been around for a bit of time now from Whelan, really popular for fire apparatus, DOT, any construction clientele. I'm going to give you an inside look at what makes this bar really what it is. It's put together a little differently than some of the other mini bars that Whelan's had over the years. And I'll show you something that makes this one a little unique in how the top is held to the bottom. You have four screw points. I'm going to go ahead. Get those out of the way here quickly. Now with the little black screws removed, the clips here are freed as far as their pressure hold goes. So they actually slide on the lip here. Once you put them into the center, they pull off. So you can actually see, if we zoom in here, that they have teeth inside, and that helps to hold them to the top and the bottom. They are on here nice and snugly, so it does take a little bit of pressure to get them to slide. fourth one removed, the top now becomes free. So that's out of the way. You can see it's a one-piece polycarbonate molded dome. It has etched optics in the top here, and this is actually a rough side in here that you can hit here by my nail scraping, versus a smooth side here. And this just has to help deal with intensity coming down on the mini bar and keeping the electronics inside safe and free from grit, grime, and overheating. Also, what it helps do is take the intensity of the modules that are around the edge of the unit and keep the light output to the sides versus putting light output through the top of the mini bar. Inside the unit here, you can see there's a self-contained wiring harness that runs from the center flasher to the six individual light heads. Now again, with this being the 11 inch, it has fewer light heads inside than its bigger 16 or 23 inch version. So the corners will stay the same. They're a small linear version. And then the inboards here are what we could call a compact TIR-6. It actually really is reminiscent of the TIR-6 head. And then it has the total of the six dots which are stepped, so three top, three bottom, with a classic TIR6 etched optic. So it has really nice potency from these modules, forward facing, rear facing. With the linear corners here, so again with Whelan's linear engineering, you have diodes that are center mounted in the reflector in a line with a diffuser going over them. So the diffuser helps spread the light to the left, to the right, to the top and the bottom of the module, giving it great off access lighting. Give you a bit of a look-see here from the back to the front and then the sides as well. Inside the bar, you get a little bit of this harness pulled away here. There's actually two extra plugs. These, in this case, don't serve a purpose. The bar itself is maxed out as far as the modules can go in its placement. But in the 16-inch version, these will be plugged into another module, same style here, one in the front, one in the back. 
So it's kind of trick, Whelan uses the same flasher in both versions. In the center here, running from the three wire bottom pigtail harness is a quick connect input. So this can actually be taken away from the flasher, plugs in right here, and this contains the ground, the power, and the flash pattern adjustment wire in the input to the board here. So go ahead, plug that back in. The harness here is what connects the flasher board to the light heads themselves. So again, the unit being field serviceable has a disconnectable harness. Let's give it a bit of a wiggle here and it comes free. So if you ever needed to, the flasher board itself can be completely removed from the fixture. It's held in place with two small Phillips head screws. The modules themselves can also be removed from the assembly. We'll go ahead and remove the four mounting screws here to free up this corner section. So we'll start with the two outside screws. Followed by the two inside screws. So with a little bit of a wiggle here, the module section can be removed. And it's actually mounted in the aluminum track down here. So one more step to get this section to be free, we'll need to go ahead and remove the plastic edge piece here. So let's go ahead, slide this back in a little bit. I'll go ahead and remove the two Torx head screws. With those removed, the polycarbonate in piece itself can also be removed. You can see it has a gasket that it goes around the edge here, so it helps to seal the bottom components to the top dome here. Go ahead, just tuck this down out of the way, free the gasket a bit, and continue with sliding the module section out of place. So you can see on the bottom here has two plastic retainers that slide it into the tracks here. Also, if you need to completely remove it, quick connect harness point here. It's in there nice and snug, so give it a bit of a wiggle and it comes free. Again, if you do the same thing with this side here, this whole section can go away for being repaired, replaced, whatever the case may need be. Or if you're switching colors, you can take components from this side, components from the inside, and flip flop them around really to any spot that you need them to be. The corner section, when you're ready to put it back in place, simply is the reverse of what we just did. So it'll slide into the channels here. Don't forget to reconnect the harness. We'll tuck that one back in there that's not used in this 11 inch version. And there we go. We can then take the end piece Line it back up to the edge. Adjust the gasket. And then the two mounting screws can go back into place. Actually, what's kind of neat is these screws here are the same that Whelan uses for affixing the end caps in their light bars. So if you're thinking those kind of look a bit familiar, I think I've seen them when I've worked on other bars before, that's the case. They hold the end caps on. There we have it, snugged back in. So again, give you a bit of a view of the gray gasket. It goes along the edge here. So it goes from the in piece, in piece, all the way around, and then tucks into the corner here, where it's wrapped into the edge and the edge with a little tooth. 
Also, if you needed to, the center TIR6 modules, we'll call them because really that's what they look like, can also be removed. So again, two Phillips head screws, one to the left, one to the right. You'd follow the process for removing the corner assembly, and this would then slide out as well right behind it. Again, quick connect harness, so that would take away, unplug it, and then replug in when you're ready for it. Just tuck the harness back in place here, getting the two extra ports that aren't being used. And for the insection here, go ahead and also remount the four retainer screws. Again, two in the bottom and the back, two in the front here. And there we go, with all four screws back in place, nice and tight. Polycarbonate dome for reassembly. I'll go back on the top here. Really quick before I do put it on, it does have a little lip here, so that'll press into the gasket. Give it a bit of a pinch all the way around the sides to help seat the dome top. Now for the edge locks, Good thing to notice here is there's a bottom and there's a top. So the top portion is a little bit larger for the Phillips head screw hole. So just make sure when you're sliding these on that you do them as accordingly. Otherwise, when you're trying to screw them back on, you're gonna need to take your mini bar this way, tighten it down, flip it over, tighten it down. And really, it's just kind of a bit of a pain to put it together that way. Especially if you have it mounted somewhere where reaching down under it really isn't too easy to do. Place them in the center, starting from the bottom and then putting it on the top, and then just go ahead and slide it down the side. So again, top screw hole here, center placement, give it a squeeze and go ahead, push it to the edge. And actually when it gets to the edge, there'll be a little pop so you'll know that it's properly locked in place. Good. Same thing on the back, place it in the center from the bottom, put the teeth over the top, go ahead, slide it down. And you can see it is nice and snug once these lock tabs are slid back in place. Take the screws that were originally moved And fourth and final screw here. And there we have it. Back together, one nice self-contained mini bar. So go ahead, put the pigtail harness to power, turn it on so you can see some of the patterns and how potent the 11 inch mini bar is. Positive 12 volts here. There you have it, firing away. So the pattern, it actually goes from the outside to the inside. That just happens to be the way the central flasher for the MC11 is. So you can see nice head-on potency from the TIR6 style light heads in the center and in the rear. And then great coverage as you get in the off access portion. So call it the 45 degrees on the corners of the mini bar. And then also your side facing profile. So you can see again, the curved reflectors help take the light and also put it out to the side. For adjusting flash patterns to whatever you'd like the bar to display, take the scan lock wire, positive 12 volts for a quick second, and it'll advance the pattern. Really with the MC11 series, Whelan, like in many of their bars, beacons, light heads, has done a great job with the flasher. Contains a lot of great patterns, so you have something slow, something fast, 
also randomized patterns. So any application, like I mentioned, you can get the attention necessary to keep the folks around the vehicles and the vehicles themselves safe. Another neat feature with these in the Amber spec is that they are a class one SAE compliant. So if you're looking for something for use on the highways and byways, freeways and interstates around the US, the Wheeland Mini Century series has you covered from the class one output spec. One more pattern here. Oh, one more. There we go, a little faster. Let's again, turn the power off, take away the ground, take away the positive, and there you have it. Inside look, Wheeland Engineering's MC11 PA Mini Century Bar Amber Permanent Mount 11 inch size. Back over to you, Stuart. Well, I've definitely enjoyed it. Don't know about the rest of you. Again, the product is available on Sarnet Television, so go ahead and check it out. From Chris and myself, Stuart, many thanks for watching Sarnet Television.